is Jason Bourne. Right? This is the type of place you can ass assassinate stone somebody across the street. <laughs> Monster dab is some orange dab that looks like earwax. Monster oh my god. Whew. And a laser pointer. <laughs> I got my creme brulee torch. <laughs> I couldn't think of a more effective way to get high for the dope show. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> what the I love fuck? It. Get excited if you guys have no idea what's going on tonight. What tonight's show has planned for you. It is an amazing lineup of stand-up comedy. I went out and I found some of the funniest internationally touring comedians who are also willing to get very high for your entertainment. <laughs> We're gonna bring them out here one by one. They're each gonna perform a set so you guys get to know them, get to love them. Then they're gonna step outside with me and I'm gonna showcase them some of Tacoma's finest marijuana. I'm gonna get them super high, embarrassingly high to be in public is what we're going for. And once we get them to that level of highness, we're gonna bring them back on one by one and they're going to attempt to perform another set of comedy. Does that sound like far and away, yeah? yeah? Hell yeah. This first comedian I'm bringing on the show today, she is making her second debut on the show. We're very excited to have her back after her first performance. You guys are gonna love her. Make some noise for the very funny Allison Rose. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I, for one, am very nervous because um, this is the dope show and I don't smoke weed. <laughs> like at all, like I woke up this morning and I was like, fuck, I have to smoke weed today. <laughs> uh, Tyler was talking about dry cunnilingus earlier and um, I have like the opposite problem when I smoke weed. The last time I smoked weed, I peed my pants. <laughs> so. <laughs> Good luck to me and to all of you when you see me after. Um, anyway, uh, I'm Allison Rose. A little bit about myself. Um, my first job ever was at McDonald's. Uh, I dated my boss at the time, whose name um, happened to be Ronald. <laughs> uh, things didn't work out between us, though, sexually. Um, he didn't think it was cute when he suggested we role play, and I showed up dressed as the Hamburglar. <laughs> The, the last straw in the relationship for me, though, was we we're, you know, getting it on, doing adult stuff, and uh, I checked in. I was like, are you enjoying yourself? And you guys, he looked me right in the eye, and he goes, ba da ba ba, -ba. <laughs> <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> we all collectively grimace at that terrible joke right now. <laughs> uh, I tend to date narcissists. Um, not on purpose, they're just very charming liars, and I am a very gullible slut. Uh, the last narcissist got me really good. Um, he told me he was getting his PhD in entomology, which is the study of bugs, and I was impressed. Um, but no, it was all lies. Um, it turns out he was just a part-time exterminator. <laughs> um, my dad is my best friend in the whole world, which it's nice. It's also a little sad, but it's nice. Um, my dad's my best friend, um, and I cook for him. He's in his 70s, and um, he really enjoys my cooking. So his favorite thing that I make for him is eggplant parmesan. I make a very good eggplant parm. Um, but he's old, and he doesn't understand emojis, and so whenever he's in the mood for eggplant parm, just a shit ton of eggplant emojis. <laughs> so weird. Um, my uh, ex-boyfriend and I recently broke up. Um, not because he found my phone and went through it and saw a bunch of eggplant emojis from someone named Daddy. 
but uh, we did break up recently. We broke up uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, we actually, we broke up two weeks ago, but technically we broke up a year ago. Um, but it was one of those like really amicable, friendly breakups. And we were so proud of ourselves for being so mature that we decided to have breakup sex. And then we did that every night for a year. <laughs> But we're for real broken up this time, I swear. Un unless he texts me today. <laughs> I am going to be stoned later. Who knows? <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, we dated for a while. He was also a comedian. And when two comics date, it is kind of complicated because you're always running bits by each other. And bits versus reality can be a bit confusing and complicated. Uh, for example, for an entire weekend, he had me convinced that he was gay. Um, he was very excited that he told me he found a loophole. He said, if I have sex with a man, you can't be jealous, otherwise you're homophobic. And I'm not homophobic, I'm an ally and a supportive girlfriend. So I did what any supportive girlfriend would do, and I bought a strap-on. <laughs> Thank you. And when I presented it to him, he was like, what are you doing? That's what, I don't want that. And I was like, I'm a supportive girlfriend. We are gonna explore your sexuality together. And he was like, but what are you crazy? It was a joke, Allison. And I was like, yeah, and this is the punchline, bitch. <laughs> then I fucked him. Uh, anyway, you guys are amazing. Um, it has been a rough couple of years for me, I will tell you that. Um, I went through a divorce, I broke both of my ankles, and I lost a very good job of many years. And at a low point in life, um, I uh, banged a broke dude by a dumpster. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was pretty depressed, and I was broke, and I was desperate for work, so I did what any middle-aged woman with a master's degree would do, and I slept my way into a line cook position at a dive bar. <laughs> and it happened to be the best career move I've ever made because it led me to my current role of owning my own restaurant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, but the best part about owning your own restaurant is that it comes with its own dumpster <laughs> for banging broke dudes. <laughs> it's not their fault that they're broke. I only pay them minimum wage. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm Allison Rose. <laughs> One more time. What fun stuff, you guys. Take that home, sleep with your boss. Uh, <laughs> get your own restaurant. Uh, we got more comics on the show. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? This next comedian, he is actually one of our co-producers for our Bremerton Dope Show. He is the host of the podcast show. Make some noise for Joseph Roger. Oh, thank you, thank you, fucking, yeah, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> uh, this is the worst part of the show for me because I am sober. <laughs> I hate that shit, I do, I fuck up a lot when I'm sober. Uh, <laughs> a little bit about me, I am pro-choice. Yeah. Oh, thank you in the back. Fucking. Don't get too excited though, not for the same reason most people are, the way I see it, that's just one less person trying to buy a house right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm serious, I used to be sad when my friends would kill themselves. Now I'm just like, ah, oh, that's one less person buying gas. So let's get those prices down a little bit, huh? Oh shit, sorry Tacoma, is that a little too dark for you to start off? <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Am I the only one that thought speed dating was a coke party? <laughs> I'm serious, I showed up with like three different kinds of speed to this thing, I was ready to go. Once I realized what it was, I had to go back to my car, smoke a bowl, get my mind right, you know, like you do. And I went back in there and I sat down and there was a beautiful gal sitting across from me. And she said, you have one question, Joe, go. And I was like, shit, one question? 
Okay. Tell me what you think about the expanding universe, quantum mechanics, string theory, and human consciousness on Earth with the rise of artificial intelligence. Go. She's like, what? I was like, never mind. Can I come in your hair? Let's just get this over with. Yeah. Yeah, she said no. Yeah. Yeah, bummer. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> Also, life hack people, I'm not sure if you guys have experienced this, but it turns out it is not a good thing to be the best looking couple to swing a party. <laughs> right? Because they want everything to do with you and you want nothing to do with them, right? It's so awkward. My ex-wife and I, we tried to salvage our fucked up marriage by going to a swinger party. Dr. Drew's right, don't do it. Uh, there were some red flags on the swinger party. The first red flag was that it was in ording. Yeah. <laughs> The second red flag is we had to pick somebody up and span away on the way, you know? <laughs> the car smelled different after we perked that person up, you know? I can tell you what, man. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I, 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 my marriage is, did not work out. Uh, there were also some red flags on the marriage before the swinger party, one of them being uh, the time I came home from work early and I caught her masturbating to an episode of Ellen. <laughs> yeah. And then there was a time where she caught me watching porn. And she's like, what are you doing? I was like, watching porn. She goes, you don't need porn. You have me. I was like, yeah, but you don't do any of the things that they do with the videos, you know? <laughs> she's like, choose porn or me. So I did what any gentleman would do. And I started masturbating to the thought of being single again. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but here's the thing, right? I, I'm a fucking genius when I smoke weed, okay? I was high, and I was like, fuck, I'm not allowed to watch porn? Okay. So I found a loophole, people. Yeah, have you guys heard of self-porn? No, you haven't, because I invented it. I invented self-porn. For those of you that don't know, it is when you record yourself masturbating, and you jack off to that. Yeah. Loophole. I found one. Well, she caught me doing that too, so. Yeah, she busted in. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm watching porn. She goes, I told you no more porn. I was like, calm down, babe. It's just me masturbating, okay? And she looks down at the video and she goes, what? If that's you, why are you wearing a blonde wig and lipstick? I'm like, oh, I gotta spice it up somehow, shit. Don't fucking judge me. Yeah, I knew her marriage was over, probably, yeah. <laughs> I do have a girlfriend now. Uh, we've been together for 19 years. Thank you. Yeah, couples in the audience, you know what that's like. Shit takes work. Fucking, it is a mostly monogamous relationship. I will say that. And by mostly monogamous, I mean sometimes she gets drunk and makes out with chicks in the bathroom, right? I tried to make her jealous one night and I was making out with a bunch of dudes in the bathroom, but she didn't care. Turns out it's hard to make a girlfriend jealous when she's passed out outside the bar. Yeah, fucking, that didn't work. <laughs> no, I love her to death though. We, we, I took her on her 19 year anniversary to a Mariner game, uh, which was romantic. We're both Mariner fans, right? And uh, I don't drink, but she does. So we get there and she's like, hey, can you go get me a, a horse cock size can of Rainier? And I was like, yeah, babe, no problem. And for those of you that don't know the horse cock size can of Rainier, it's the really big one, you know? And, uh, I went and bought one, and yeah, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but $17 for one. Yeah, for the longest time, I thought true love was just letting her stick a couple fingers in your butt. No, true love is three beers for $51, okay? That is true love. And did you guys know it's not romantic while on your date to complain about the price of beer the whole time? Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, you knew that? Yeah, because you've been happily married for 30 plus years, I bet fucking flexing on me right now with your knowledge. Oh, it's the big bear, yes it is. Yeah, that's not a horse cock size can, that's more of like a pony size can of beer you got there. Still impressive, and I know it's not about the size that matters, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. How oh yeah, you cover her mouth, she knows the real answers. Yeah, what's the ratio like between you two? Do you guys, pretty even 50-50 ratio? You don't know what I'm talking about? The cum ratio, come on now. <laughs> You, is it balanced or is it more heavily, you know? I'm afraid to answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought. Fucking a quarter is not bad. 25% ratio is not bad for a guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that got awkward. My bad, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but here's the thing, right? Uh, I like to smoke weed and have sex, and my girlfriend likes it too. Uh, one of the reasons why is because when I smoke just the right amount of weed, I can last all night. Yeah. And uh, my girlfriend calls it weed wiener, right? <laughs> She's like, why don't you bring me some weed wiener tonight? I'm like, all right, I can do that, right? So I go smoke the right amount of weed. I come back, and I'm giving troll all night. Here's the problem with weed wiener, though, people. There's this noise that goes off in my head every time I come with weed wiener. You guys want to know what it is? Yeah. I don't know why, right? Every time I come, biah, 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 right? And it doesn't make any sense, right? Because I'm not a shooter. If I was a shooter, that would make sense. Biah, but I'm a dripper, right? So it should be more like, biah, 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 biah. And then I just have a map of Hawaii in front of me, you know? <laughs> What the fuck am I gonna do with that? All right, I have a confession to make, people. I smoke weed all the time, so I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna smoke so much weed, but also just to elevate the level of high that I'm going to get, I'm also gonna consume mushrooms. Yeah, I actually already ate them and they're starting to kick in right now, so by the time I come back, I should be having a good time with you guys. Love you, have a good night. Joseph Rogers, everybody, let him hear it. For, for legal reasons, he did not consume any mushrooms. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> we, uh, God, that was a joke. A little jokey joke. Just, uh, this is theater of the mind tonight. Um, don't report us. Oh, what are you doing there, Joe? Oh, just doing a dab. <laughs> yeah. I brought my torch from home and my dab rig for the dope show. Yeah, because this is the only way I can get high. So... I'm smoking weed too. And what's the THC of that weed? <laughs> None of your business. It's very low. <laughs> the lowest in the store. And I already feel it after the one little baby hit. And people always say, aren't you worried about doing dabs in public, Joe? I'm like, hell no, bro. I saw somebody shoot up some black tar heroin the other day. <laughs> and that was just at home. Yeah. That was just at home right outside. <laughs> and you left the pad. How's your 1.7 hitting you? Hard! Oh yeah? <laughs> Fair enough. I did have some body already though. So I'm doing the crossfade. Oh, the crossfade? The only way I could get the courage to do this. Okay, so this is past where I was last time. Oh. Which is about my limit. Okay. So How are you feeling? More than 1.7 percent, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. 1.7 for me is about 1. 1.7 for me is like a dab for him. One dab. Is that what you call it? One dab? One dab. This is my third dab I'm about to do. I'm taking one marijuana. And the last dope show that I did, which was the first dope show that I ever did, which was the first time I smoked weed in many years, uh, I went into my work afterwards and was just like standing there, like watching everyone. And then like, and then I was like, I feel like I should help because it was really busy. And then I went behind the bar and I was like, just like, look, like, I Lost. couldn't do anything. <laughs> I'm feeling it, bro. Are you? Yeah. Me too. Woo. I gotta take off this hoodie. I'm, I'm gonna have a hard time not taking off all my clothes on stage. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. I know your cheeks are flush, brother. Stoked for your set. Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah, dude. I gotta start trying to figure out what I'm gonna talk about, though. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I feel good. Hell yeah, I gotta think about it now before I before I fucking go to land. I think I know what I'm going to open with. I know what I'm going to open with, and then I'm going to rely on my brain to know what to go with after that. It's probably the worst strategy in comedy, but <laughs> we're going to riff it out. There you go. You guys ready to see some high comedians now? Yeah. All right, I got these guys nice and stoned for you. Please make some noise for the very high Allison Rose. Oh. I did the stairs. Yeah. Brought toilet paper just in case. And I meant to bring my water, but I brought my vodka instead, so that's just going to be even more fun. I was trying to decide about what to talk about while I'm stoned. I was deciding between dick pics or being a professional business lady. I think I'm going to do both. <laughs> Thank you. 
I really like dick pics. I do. I'm a busy, professional businesswoman, and I find it very polite if you give me a picture of what I'm going to be working with so I can decide if it's worth my time. Uh, I don't think I'm funny when I'm stoned. Hold on. Uh, a friend of mine recently told me that um, I look like a lady who has her shit together. Which, like, maybe on the surface, but if you saw me in the bathroom earlier, I realized my skirt was on backwards and I forgot to put underwear on today. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, on the surface, I have my shit together. Like, I have, I own a restaurant. I have a decent credit score. My mouth is very dry. Um, and, wait, I forgot my joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the wrong joke. Uh, they told me, uh, yeah, a professional, uh, a lady with her shit together. Um, oh, fuck me. That weed was strong. Um, I used to do social work uh, for 15 years. I left it to own a restaurant. Um, the two jobs, though, are kind of the same if you think about it, except in social work, you're telling people, you know, to make positive life choices, not be like you, um, <laughs> seek therapy and quit drinking. And then in the other profession, you go, drink my booze and give me your money. <laughs> Have I done like 12 minutes? Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, but I'll tell you, I love my job, I love what I do, but the hardest part about owning a restaurant, two things. One, uh, people who ask silly questions. Um, we have a deviled egg platter at our restaurant, and I had a customer ask, which of your deviled eggs are vegan? <laughs> None of them are vegan, they all come out of a chicken's asshole, Jesus. <laughs> And then, oh, thank you. <laughs> and then the other, um, the other one. Where am I? The, <laughs> the other uh, hardest part about owning a restaurant is people that leave mean reviews online. We have an orzo dish. Nope, I fucked that up too. We have a risotto dish. We have a risotto dish at our restaurant, uh, and a lady left a one-star review about it. She wrote, um, on the online review, she wrote, Ris your risotto is not real risotto, real risotto is pasta. And as you can all see, as the professional businesswoman that I am, I responded to the online review, and I said, dear lady, what did I say? <laughs> said, dear lady, risotto, I got it, risotto is a rice dish originating from northern Italy. My chefs cook it to perfection. You're thinking about orzo, you fucking horzo. Yeah. <laughs> That's when my employees banned me from responding to online reviews for life. You guys are my best friends. I love you all. Thank you so much. I am very high. I'm going to go. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Allison Rose, everybody, let her hear it. She, uh, she just told me that she didn't pee her pants. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't hear everything, and I was like, wait, what'd you just fucking say? <laughs> oh, God. We're going to have to stage clean up. Come on. Let's get over with it. Uh, I was the lady that wrote that review. That's kind of hurtful. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know my dishes. Are you guys ready for another high comedian? 
You've seen him before. Make some noise with a very high Joseph Rogers. I was hoping to nail that, but yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> Oh, yeah, buddy. Mm. I'm not okay right now. I smoked way too many dabs outside. I did like 10 dabs. Yeah, oh no, my mom's pissed. She hear her? She said, oh no. Dude, it's so bright in here right now, bro. This is ridiculous. I was fucking uh, <laughs> off the premises, doing drugs, and I blew a huge cloud out, and I was so proud of this cloud. And the guy, some guy jogging, dragged through my cloud and breathed some in. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? He's like, really? I'm like, well, fuck, I'm just trying to help you get to your runner's high faster, motherfucker. And there's CBD in that hit, so your knees are gonna be okay tomorrow, you fucking <laughs> ungrateful piece of shit. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, man, this is America, bro. So I did another huge cloud, and I watched it travel, and this one went farther, and it went right into a kid's face. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Fuck, I should probably stop smoking outside. And then Jeremy was like, dude, you brought a whole dab rig out here in public like this? I'm like, yeah, this is my creme brulee torch. Okay, I left my dab torch at home. Okay. And he totally didn't even acknowledge the guy right next to us that was doing fentanyl right there. And it's like, fuck, I think I'm going to be okay doing dabs in downtown Tacoma. Fuck <laughs> We, we watched a guy dragging a box earlier. Like, so I'm glad I saw that before I got high. Fuck. Oh my God, dude, this is. My heart is racing. Mm, yeah, my Fitbit's like, oh, great workout right now. <laughs> I'm getting zone minutes, baby. Look at that. Fucking 127 beats a minute. Fuck, dude. That's pretty high, right? What am I doing with my life? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't even know how much time I have left. What do you guys want to talk about? Fuck. <laughs> what do you guys want? These are my, uh, it's 420 somewhere shades. Uh, it's got the smoky, smoky thing on the side. It's got the green. It's, no, they're not Ray-Bans. They're knockarounds. 50, 50 bucks. Uh, you want to bid them? Should I bid them off? Not a gas station motherfucker. <laughs> These are actually, it's 420 somewhere shades. They got a little pot leaf on the front right there. Someone Venmo me 60 bucks and I'll give them to you right now. <laughs> My Venmo is comedy and Kitsap, all one word. I paid 50 for these shades, but if you send me 60 before I get off stage, I will give you my shades. <laughs> If I had more time, I would auction off my shirt and my pants. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we have that much time. <laughs> Comedy and Kitsap, all one word on Venmo if you want my shades, bruh. <laughs> How much for the pants? <laughs> I, didn't you hear me earlier? I'm in a mostly monogamous relationship. <laughs> I cannot auction off my pants. Shoes, these are like uh, my favorite purple shoes. These are like uh, 65 online. So if you Venmo me like 80, I'll give them to you, you know? <laughs> 11 and a half, NFT, gently worn, fucking. I'll sell my gently used condoms if you'd like to. <laughs> Where's my football fans at? I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna do some real good football fans. Fuck the Patriots, bro. Fuck the Patriots. Deflate gate, bro. Deflate my balls. Patriots fan over here. I'm going to share with you real quick the reason why I love football, okay? It's not for the fucking concussions. It's for the commentary. You know what I'm talking about? They always say the sexual innuendos in the commentary. Like, fuck, oh, the goal was wide open and he still couldn't score. Yeah, those were some Paul Bohr handling. Fuck, I'm fucked up. I'm going to play you my favorite one, you guys. This is 100% real. Energy going again. Yeah, and let him do 
getting a little taste of some of these big guys coming out there. Like, all right, you think you're going to run around our guy? How about if you get a little taste of Landon Dickerson coming around? That's not even the best part. Listen to the best part. Taste of Landon Dickerson coming right down your throat. Are you kidding me, bro? Are you kidding me? You think you're going to run around our big guys? How about if you get a little taste of Landon Dickerson coming right down your throat? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the guy with two ladies. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Fuck yeah, dude. How do you come down both their throats at the same time? That's what I want to know. How do you do that? You fucking, that'd be awesome, right? Fucking, what the fuck? I'm a, did you give me the light yet? What? Oh, sorry. All right. Let me just make sure I didn't get Venmo'd real quick. Nope. Love you. Have a good night.